What's good, y'all? This is your boy. <clears throat> What's good, y'all? This is your boy, D Humble Hustler, back with another video. And in today's video, hold on, let me see what time it is. Okay, in today's video, we're going to be talking about a movie that I just went and saw. I'm not going to be telling y'all all the parts because I don't want to spoil it for the people who have not been there to see it. But we talking about that movie Candyman. And before we get into that, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel, please. It helps the YouTube algorithm. We on the road to uh, 500 subscribers and then hopefully 1,000. So, another review I got to do is on the movie Don't Breathe. I got a review for that that I'm going to tell y'all about. Um, I've been a little behind, been working a lot, long hours and stuff like that. But now getting to the Candyman, some of you may not know what that is. Me, I'm an 80s baby, so I'm born in 84. So I grew up on that, the Candyman thing. In my opinion, I think it's a great movie. My favorite, one of my favorite things about the movie, it was written and directed by Jordan Peele, which if, if you don't know who Jordan Peele is, he's the dude that did Get Out, which was a huge hit. Mind you, I'm going to watch that movie tonight. And he also did his second movie, which was Us, written and direct. So I believe this is his third. I'm a big fan of his, and he also did like the remake of The Twilight Zone and all that. If you don't know who he is, definitely look him up. His movies are excellent, you know. Um, he's going to be another very successful um, movie producer. And to be honest, I would say he's going to be like a Tyler Perry, but I feel he's going to make a lot more movies than Tyler Perry. He's going to be like the modern-day Stephen King or the modern-day John Carpenter, which, if you don't know who those two directors are, they directed a lot of horror movies between the two of them, and they two of the most celebrated horror directors ever. And I think 10 years from now, not even 10 years, I think five years from now, Jordan Peele is going to be in that topic also. But getting back to uh, Candyman, what I'm going to say is basically, all right, in the first Candyman, because that's not going to spoil anything, you had the white lady who was uh, doing like a, uh, uh, you know, trying to do like a story on something and she went to the hood. Never been to the hood before. You know, she was from a middle class or upper class area, but she went to the hood. And, you know, you keep looking for trouble. Sooner or later, you're going to find trouble. She kept poking around the hood, poking around the ghetto to the point where it's damn near like she got comfortable being in the ghetto. Like she started being there every damn day, having drinks, eating with the poor people, all that. And uh, she was obviously trying to do a story on Candyman, looking for Candyman. She found Candyman. Once again, if you're looking for trouble, you're going to find trouble. I guarantee you, no matter who you are, if you're looking for trouble, you can get trouble. Oh, yeah, you can get that smoke, definitely. And that's what she got. Um, she met Candyman, obviously. There was a lot of people being killed. Candyman was actually doing it, but the, what I don't realize about Candyman is... To me, he operates like Freddy Krueger. And to be honest, I respect Jason more than both of them because you don't got to say Jason's name to be killed by Jason. You know what I'm saying? You could be fucking minding your business and don't even know who the fuck Jason is. And if you if you out there in Crystal Lake or you get caught in the wrong place, he chopping your motherfucking head off. You ain't got to fall asleep. You ain't got to say his name. You don't got to come up with no scheme or write a book or a letter about him. He just going to kill you. Same thing with Michael Myers. You know what I'm saying? He running around colleges, driving cars. Michael Myers got his driver's license. Like, I think the dude got a regular fucking nine to five job. But see, with Candyman, you got to say his name five times. And after that, you don't get to say it no more. He pretty much kills you. Now, I don't know about y'all. I'm kind of naive. When I first heard about Candyman... I didn't think it was a horror movie. I thought it was a guy that actually sold candy and everybody called him the candy man. You know what I'm saying? Don't laugh. That's what I thought. Obviously, I know the truth now. So, basically, you got to say his name five times. If you do that, you get killed. 
with Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger has no power. He can only give you nightmares when you fall asleep. Most of his power lies when you sleep. Basically, he plays off your own conscience. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has fears. So he plays off of your fear. But even with Freddy, he weak. The, how he gets stronger is by you talking about him. The more people he kill, the more you talk about him, the more stronger he get. If you pay attention, the same thing with Candyman. There's no difference. Candyman has no power. Right? You could go through the projects. You could hang in the projects. You could piss on the side of the walls in the elevator. You could put up graffiti. You ain't got to worry about shit. Right? He ain't going to do nothing to you. He weak. He can't do nothing. But stalk you and watch you like a pervert. Or like one of them homeless bums or something. But if you say his name five times and you speak his name and you make him popular, now he can hurt you. So, Candyman kills everybody, except for one particular person. And the one person he doesn't seem to kill is the fall guy. And what I mean by the fall guy, you got to remember, it's kind of different with Freddy. Freddy don't give a fuck about no fall guy. You know what I mean? Freddy killing everybody if he got the chance, and that's that. You know what I'm saying? Where Candyman is more sneaky with it. It's like, I mean, this dude is dead. He's dead. And he's still scared of the police. Pete Game, he's dead. They can't do shit to him. But he's still scared of the police. And the reason why he's scared of the police is he'll kill a bunch of people. Right? And the one and the one person that he got to make him popular, you know, by saying his name over and over again, getting other people to say his fucking name and dying. The one person who puts him on the map will be the one to go to jail. Not even jail. They go to a fucking mental hospital for the rest of their life. Why? Because they are so close to the people that got killed because they the ones that told the people to say his name. You call it like a unwilling participant. They didn't know they was aiding him in his uh, quest. The one person that believed in him and made him popular is the one that's going to go to jail for life. But they're gonna not going to go to a regular jail. They're going to end up going to a mental hospital for the simple fact that they're going to get blamed for all of the killings. So if you remember Candyman back in the days, they... um. The white girl was upset. She finally found the story, but by the time she found the story, she started hallucinating, thinking she was seeing him. She was really seeing him, but nobody else could see him. And he was killing people, but he made it look like she was killing people. And you saw what happened to her. Her boyfriend broke up with her, cheated on her with a young girl. You know what I'm saying? She started dreaming about Candyman, falling in love with Candyman. She thought she, uh, she was having daydreams of tongue kissing this man, and and having a family. But you know, not to be funny, <laughs> y'all women be into that type of shit. I ain't gonna say what race, but y'all be into some type of shit. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not a racist. I love everybody. But y'all be into that shit and y'all know who y'all are. Falling in love with killers and shit like that. Falling in love with niggas that wear their pants sagging. You know what I mean? Falling in love with dudes that's gay. Dudes that act like thugs but soft. Yeah, y'all know. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So, she fell in love with him. Her boyfriend broke up with her, everything. And at the end, she got set up for the murders. Ended up going to the crazy house. Even in the crazy house, she still couldn't get no rest. Because he was under the bed, stalking her, smelling her panties. Nah, he ain't really smell her panties. But he probably wanted to. He looked like the type of dude that smelled panties. I ain't even gonna lie to you. You know what I mean? And, you know, he was always in the bathroom when she washed her face and took her medicine. And she ended up breaking out the hospital and towards the end of the movie, everybody started thinking she was the candy man because they couldn't see this this dude. Every time somebody died, she was right there next to the person. And she was like, candy man did it. But nobody saw no black dude with a hook running around with a, with a fucked up leg with some dirty church pants on with a, with a trench coat and not the one from Shaft. Shaft had a black trench coat. This dude had a brown 
a trench coat with a motherfucking sheep's head collar on it. That joint look hotter than a motherfucker. And he's out there in 90 degree weather, walking around with a hook, stalking people, talking about, tell everyone, say my name, with a bunch of bumblebees as bodyguards. That's some dangerous shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm scared of bumblebees now. Because I think Candyman trying to get in my mother effing business, you feel me? So I'll be killing them bumblebees, you heard? But, uh, I don't know. That's what happened in the past. So now in this new movie, I ain't gonna get into all of that. It's a great movie, but you know. Apple don't fall far from the tree. It's still the same scenario, though. The only difference is, it's not a female that becomes obsessed with him. It's a dude who becomes obsessed with him. But the crazy thing is, I don't know if y'all remember 20 years ago in the first Candyman, there was a baby that got kidnapped. The black girl's baby that the crazy white girl ended up rescuing out the fire that was going to die. You know, that baby was going to be a willing sacrifice to die and become Candyman. Well, that baby never died, but the baby grew up and became a painter, like an artist or something. He was like a Bosco, a Bosquee. You know what I'm saying? If y'all don't know who Bosquee is, he from Brooklyn. Famous black painter. All right? He was friends with the guy that made the Amico sign, gas station. The horses and all that. The horse painting and all that. All right, whatever. Y'all need to do y'all history and start looking things up. You feel me? I can't be the only smart person out here. You feel me? Hold on. Let me ask Jesus. What? Oh, you want me to... What about you? What you think? Oh, you got small ideas. You got big ideas. 